This terrifying report comes from the Wukonago Chief, a newspaper in Wisconsin, dated November 24, 1916. Attacked by two monster eagles while deer hunting in the Malibu district, Dr. Kingsbury of Ocean Park, Jim Wilson, a rancher, and policeman Harry Wright of Santa Monica fought two hours before they were able to kill the birds, writes a Los Angeles correspondent. Shrieking and screaming, the eagles tore at the men with their claws, tearing Wright's clothing in many places and inflicting a flesh wound on Kingsbury's right shoulder. The fight began with only one of the birds. The men were hunting on the Williams Ranch with two dogs. Suddenly, a huge eagle swooped down and grabbed one of the dogs. It circled 20 feet in the air with the dog in its talons before the men could fire. The first shot missed, but the second shot from Kingsbury's gun brought the bird down. As the three men rushed forward, the eagle dropped the dog and struck out at right, screaming all the while. Its screams brought its mate, the latter making an attack on Kingsbury and sinking its talons into his shoulder. William shot and killed the bird that was fighting with Wright, and then the two rushed the remaining eagle. It started to fly away, and then came back. The men began shooting at it, driving it a little further away with each shot. For four miles, they chased the bird, before they finally were able to kill it. This report of a large bird attacking a young boy comes from the Idaho Recorder, a newspaper based out of Coweta, Idaho, dated February 7, 1907. Monster bird swoops down on child, carries him 50 yards, then releases him. The five-year-old son of Nero Charles, a farmer living near Coweta, was attacked by a large gray eagle a few days ago and narrowly escaped with his life after being carried 50 yards by the fierce bird. So far as known, this is the first time in the history of Indian Territory that a child has actually been picked up and carried by an eagle. The child, with others, were playing in a field on his father's farm near Jackson Ferry on Verdigris River, eight miles northeast of Coweta, when the eagle swooped down upon him, catching the child's clothing with its talons and starting off. The screams of the other children apparently frightened the eagle, and, finding that it could not make much progress with the child, it dropped him 50 yards from the place where he was picked up. The child weighs 50 pounds, and at no time did the eagle succeed in getting more than 8 or 10 feet above the ground with him. The child was not injured, save for a few bruises and scratches when his parents found him. The eagle made no attempt to strike its talons into the child, nor beat him with its wings. It has been known for some time that there are two gray eagles nesting on the Verdigris River not far from Jackson's Ferry. About 10 days ago, a farmer named Kirksbride, who lives near the ferry, killed one of the eagles with a rifle. They were very cunning, and it was very impossible to get close enough to kill them with a shotgun. When this eagle was shot, it was devouring a pig which it had killed. Since the child was attacked by the eagle, another one has been killed, and it is believed that these are the only two birds left. Both of these are very large and fierce enough to cause trouble. Each of the two killed measured over 7 feet from tip to tip of its wings. This story comes from the Spanish Fork Press in Utah, dated April 29, 1909. Illinois farmer in desperate conflict with monster monarch of the air. Struggle lasts two hours. St. Charles, Illinois, fighting desperately for two hours with a monster eagle to keep his baby from the menacing talons of the great bird, Peter Johnson, a farmer with the aid of neighbors, finally captured the king of the air. Fully, a score of persons attacked this bird with the eagle and pitchforks, clubs, and stones were brought into service before the bird, exhausted from his efforts, gave up the battle. Johnson was terribly scratched in the encounter, although his son was unhurt. The Johnson boy, a sturdy child of three years, was playing on his father's farm near St. Charles the other morning when the eagle was first observed. The great bird circled about the vicinity at a great height for several minutes. Suddenly, with the speed of a lightning flash, it started down, and its still light talons caught in the child's dress. The child's surprise for a second struck him dumb, and the eagle, using every ounce of its strength, bore the boy upward. Surprise gave way to alarm. The child screamed for aid and struggled vigorously to free himself from the bird's clutches. The boy is a stockily built lad, weighing about 35 pounds, and the bird was unable to make great progress. The father heard the screams of the child and warned from his home. He saw the boy in the bird's clutches and ran towards the scene of the struggle. With all his strength, he threw himself on the eagle and bore it to the ground. 
The child was saved and ran shrieking for assistance from his father. The man and the bird were locked in a death grip, the eagle using his claws while Johnson struck out with his free hand as he held the bird with the other. Neighbors were soon on the scene. From the start, they were determined, if possible, to capture the eagle alive. Sticks and stones fell on the monster body, while both wings were immediately crippled. The breaking of the wings made escape of the eagle impossible, but for two hours, he fluttered along the ground fiercely, repelling every attack until, completely exhausted, he was pinned to the earth by two pitchforks. The eagle, when measured, proved to be 12 feet from tip to tip of his wings and a perfect specimen of its kind. It is believed he will speedily recover from his injuries and its struggle with the men, and Johnson plans to present it to some zoological garden. Although Johnson is suffering intense pain as a result of the scratch received in the fight, none of his hurts are regarded as dangerous, the worst wound being an immense gash torn in his left shoulder. He was greatly weakened from his loss of blood. The boy is none worse for his experience and takes great delight in watching the imprisoned bird.